Welcome to the WP Tonic This Week in WordPress and SaaS podcast, where Jonathan Denwood interviews the leading experts in WordPress, e-learning, and online marketing to help WordPress professionals launch their own SaaS. Welcome back, folks, to the This Week in WordPress and SaaS. We've got a returning guest, a friend of the show, um, somebody that I admire, uh, um, Dr. Evil, KK. So, <laughs> that made him laugh. Uh, Actually, I have the Dr. Evil right here, not to yeah. mess up the introduction. but uh. No, no, no. Uh, we've got Adam um, from Cartflow, Shaw members, and WP Crafters. Um, we're going to be discussing all things WordPress, uh, where Adam thinks WordPress is going, um, also going to be talking about Shaw members, cart flows. It's going to be a fabulous show. It's our last show of 2022. Um, it, it should be a great show. Before we go into the meat and potatoes of it, I've got a couple of messages from our major sponsors. We'll be back in a few moments. Are you looking for ways to make your content more engaging? Sensei LMS by Automatic is the original WordPress solution for creating and selling online courses. Sensei's new interactive blocks can be added to any WordPress page or post. For example, interactive videos let you pause videos and display quizzes, lead generation forms, surveys, and more. For a 20% off discount for the tribe, just use the code WPTONIC, all one word, when checking out and give Sensei a try today. The importance of backing up your WordPress website cannot be emphasized enough. We use BlogVault to help us do this on a daily basis. With free staging, migrations, and on the pro plans, malware scanning and auto fix, BlogVault is the professional's choice when managing just one website or many. Go to blogvault.com and see for yourself. You seriously won't find a better, more complete solution. That's blogvault.com, blogvault.com. Com. We're coming back. Um, I just wanted to say that we got some amazing special deals from our sponsors. Plus, we got a list of great plugins. If you're looking to build a membership or a learning management system on WordPress, we've got a great list of plugins that we use, so you don't have to hunt for them. Um, to get all these goodies, all you have to go, do is go over to WP Tonic Deals. WP Tonic slash deals, and you get all those goodies there. Um, I've also got my great co host, got Kurt um, with me. Kurt, would you like to introduce yourself to the listeners and viewers? Sure, sure. Uh, my name is Kurt, Kurt Von Onen. Uh, I own a little agency called Manana No Mas, uh, which means basically that I get everything done on time and under budget. And um, Folks, I just uh, uh, thrilled to be here with Adam. I met him at uh, WordCamp US, and uh, I've been following his stuff for a long time, so it's kind of cool to be in the conversation. Right then, Adam. So would you like to give an introduction about yourself and how you got into WordPress in general to the new listeners and viewers who might, for some reason, not know you? Oh, I'm sure there's a ton of people that have never uh, come across me or one of my videos, but I'm working to fix that. Uh, anyways, um, and, and me and Kurt are actually neighbors. So uh, he's not like next door neighbors, but we might as well be in uh, terms of uh, he's in the neighboring city of, of mine. So, uh, but my name's Adam. Um, uh, most people might recognize my voice or my Beautiful bald head from YouTube. I was probably one of the earliest folks on YouTube making videos regarding uh, WordPress, building websites, building your business online. And so that's where my kind of my claim to fame would be, if you could call it that. Uh, but then uh, probably, what was it, uh, 2017, I decided to get into making products. And so there's uh, several very successful products that uh, we've come to market with. Cart Flows was the first, and then we came out with uh, Presto Player. I love Presto Player. It's the most amazing video player for WordPress. And more recently, Shure Cart and Shure Members, and there's about three new things coming in 2023. 
Oh, well, that's great because uh, Adam, you've got plenty of my money. I've bought all your stuff, so, <laughs> uh, so I've contributed my bit, haven't I, Adam? Uh, um, um, so, sure, car and sure members. Um, why that direction, and um, what was you know why you ch- why that particular product? Um, market position took your fancy what, what, why that particular area uh, so there's actually multiple ways i could answer that one uh, we'll go back to the early days so the the first product that came out with was card flows and card flows is for woocommerce so it um turns woocommerce into a tool that can have um an optimized checkout upsells order bumps and all this kind of stuff and we gained a ton of experience through the card flows experience uh, working with we have now about uh, 250,000 merchants using card flows. So we got a ton of experience into the needs of a merchant as well as being merchants ourselves. And so I wanted to do something. Actually, I, I I I probably wouldn't recommend this to just anyone, uh, but I want to do something bigger. Everything I try to do next is bigger than the thing I did prior. And so when looking at e-commerce with WordPress, I'm sure I'm not the only one that would agree. There should be more options on the market than there currently are, right? We have pretty much WooCommerce has 99% of the market. Like everybody else is uh, just getting the crumbs. And this means there's like very few very few options on the market. And everyone could probably also agree that there's some issues there with WooCommerce as well. Some challenges. It's not so easy to set up. It can be kind of pricey when you want to do something simple and you're spending a couple hundred dollars per year per simple thing that you're trying to do with WooCommerce uh, and the performance issues of WooCommerce. So I felt that there was a better, there could be a better way. And that's how SureCart started. Nice. And it is a better way. <laughs> well, um, it's a big, it's a big beast. It's a big target. Um, what have been some of the challenges that were slightly unexpected in trying to become a player in that particular sector, Adam? Well, I'll tell you, uh, building an e-commerce platform is not for the faint of heart because it's complex, requires very smart people. Uh, so SureCard is not just me. I have multiple co-founders um, that are very, very smart people because there's a lot of intricacies with an e-commerce platform that you don't realize. And some of the e-commerce platforms as well, they go the the easy route, right? You you start using it and then you realize, huh, this is pretty much just a Stripe wrapper. Uh, uses Stripe for everything. I can't do all these things I need to do for my e-commerce store. And so as we were building out Shortcart, it's it's so funny, like when I when I when I uh, first announced the uh, Shortcart. I was transparent. I'm like, yeah, I've been working on this thing for two years. And there was someone saying, oh, my gosh, I can't. I could have built that thing in three months, you know, and, and, and like, oh, I'm like, OK, great. There's there's not a chance. Just like a tiniest component of SureCard took three months to build, you know. Uh, but uh, ultimately, we haven't run into a lot of challenges, and I think that's because we knew what we were getting into. We fully scoped it out. We we knew exactly what we needed. We got the right people to help and build this thing out the right way, and because we have a lot of experience building products, and we have a deep connection to the community. So I knew what people needed because I needed it myself. I... um made sure we had the right people with the right skill sets to build this thing. And it's been amazing. It's been a great, it's been a great process. Um, So, but I will say 
it's the most challenging thing that I've ever built because it's very intricate, very intricate. So for example, uh, taxation, <laughs> I'll tell you like the toughest thing you want to, you want to, you want to know the funniest, toughest thing is like European tax laws. <laughs> you know, like Every different country has a different requirement. For example, if you live in Italy and soon France, or, I'm sorry, if you're a merchant in Italy or in Fr uh, soon France, every day you have to have an XML export of all your orders with all the sequential order numbers. And you have to send that to the tax office daily. So it's uh, really been na navigating all these like intricate like requirements for all the different countries in the world because it's a global platform. That's been fun. It's been a fun onion to pill. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, you describe, you, I'm sure. you describe a scenario of, of train hard and fight easy, though, right? So as long as you're well prepared and you and you know it going in, then boom. Yeah. Well, I, I, the, the the funny thing about some of the EU uh, regulations, they keep popping up. <laughs> There's something new every year, <laughs> a new challenge every year. But it's okay because we built the platform in such a way where we can uh, we we were EU compliant. Uh, where you'd be surprised to denote most e-commerce platforms are not. They're not EU compliant in the slightest. But there's so many different requirements regarding how VAT is displayed, inclusive, exclusive, sequential order numbers, like you name it. It is uh, subscription reminders, seven day. Well, that's a simple thing, subscription reminders, but you'd be surprised at how few uh, platforms actually have that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that I think would probably be the, 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 the one thing that, um, uh, is been the 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 toughest. Uh, well, no, it's the only. It's not that it's been tough. It's just been a curveball, <laughs> curveball. So we're just catching the curveballs, you know, uh, which is perfectly fine. Over to you, Kirk. Oh, um, you know, Adam. Out of the products you mentioned, the thing I have the most experience with is Presto Player, and I'm looking forward to trying Sure Members out with a combination of tools that Jonathan promotes at WP Tonic. Um, and you've already touched on it. But like, what could you share with the audience as far as like the strategy of, of launching something successfully in the WordPress space? Yeah, I, I've been very fortunate that every product I've launched, I've uh, been all in on and they've all done amazingly well. Of course, I'm in a little bit of a different situation in that. I spent five years building a YouTube channel. It's actually been seven years now, building a YouTube channel and a community uh, of people that uh, believe in me and trust me and trust in the decisions that I'll make. So they know that if I come out with something, I'm in that for the long haul and it's going to be the best in that category. So I have that like, I don't actually call it an unfair advantage. It's a very fair advantage because I spent years building it, you know, and I truly care about uh, the people, my users, the people that are on my channel. I truly care about all of them. Um, so, but if you don't have that, I think the most important thing when bringing a product to market is how the heck are you going to get users aware of this product? So if you don't have the the already existing following or subscriber base or people that are keeping their uh, watch on you, you have to figure out who does and how can you, um, what's the word, like um, butter them up is a one way of putting it, butter them up, befriend them. So like, for example, I go to word camps. I go to WordCamps, and actually a lot of people come up to me at the WordCamps, right, uh, because of the YouTube channel. But I'm going to the WordCamps for what I was just talking about. I'm going to the WordCamps to talk to people, uh, get joint um, efforts together, exposure to products, things like that. That's why I'm going to WordCamps, you know what I mean? Make friends. Of course, I like the social aspect of it as, as well. I love making new friends. Um, but, you know, I make the effort to go to WordCamp EU in Porto like six months ago and go to the one in San Diego that didn't take much effort because um, it's not far for me, uh, but I'm making the effort to go to Bangkok in two months and I'm making the effort to go to um, uh, Athens in June or July. I think it's June because I want to get as much exposure for my products as possible. So if someone's coming to the, to the market with a product, 
you're going to have to figure out who has the eyeballs and how can you befriend those people and get them to buy in on your vision of what you've made and have it really make sense. So uh, to get to get access to the people that actually use the things. So I think that is like the, the biggest key, right? It's the biggest key for everyone. Like how are you going to get to the buyer or the user if it's a free product? Do you remember, yeah. do you remember that um, I, I was trying to persuade you to go to Orange County one? You were, do you remember that first one? And you were a bit, I'm not sure if I if it's worth me going. And I, I said, oh, you should go. I didn't definitely go. But didn't, didn't, didn't I go? Like I went to like two of the ones in you, Orange you County. Had, we, I bet you there. Oh, yeah. We, we met for the first time there. Yeah. It was in 2019 probably or 20. I know oh, I was God, there in 2018 and 20. Time. I got a good memory. 2018 and I, 2019 I was there. I haven't. I haven't. It all merges. But I remember, I remember you were thinking of going and you weren't too sure. And I said, oh, you definitely should go, Adam. You, you're you're it's well worth the effort. Um, I, I still remember that one, actually. It was quite well run, actually. Um, well, let, let me let me say something to that. Like, I tend to, my wife would disagree, but I tend to be like a little reserved in, when it's groups of over two or yeah. three people with me. Um, I, I can be nervous. I don't know. Technically, I don't know anybody IRL, right, in real life uh, at these things when I went to the first ones. So it was like, oh, but, you know, you go there, you just got to push through it and break out of it. A great strategy is to look at the attendee list, contact some people in advance that you want to have a meeting with. Hey, can we get together for 20 minutes? Um, this, that, and the other. Uh, there's lots of ways of um, going to a place where you don't know anyone and actually um, g- overcoming that I don't know anyone thing. Well, um, well you're a bit like me because um, I think you would say not totally, it's a mixture of both, but um, people think I'm a total out of it, but I'm not. I'm, I'm quite introverted, actually. Um, and I think you're a bit like that yourself. Totally. People, because people, because you run a very successful YouTube channel, they straight away think you're going to be a very out of it type, but you're a bit like me. So um, I think we're going to go for our break, Adam, and we'll be back. It's always a joy having Adam and having a chat. He's so knowledgeable. We will be back in a few moments, folks. Hey, it's Spence from LaunchFlows.com. If you've been looking for a fast and easy way to create powerful sales funnels on WordPress, then look no further than LaunchFlows. In just minutes, you can easily create instant registration, upsells, downsells, order bumps, one-click checkouts, one-time offers, custom thank you pages, and best of all, no coding is required. For as little as $50 per year, you can own and control your entire sales funnel machine with LaunchFlows. Get your copy today. This podcast episode is brought to you by Lifter LMS, the leading learning management system solution for WordPress. If you or your client are creating any kind of online course, training-based membership website, or any type of e-learning project, Lifter LMS is the most secure, stable, well-supported solution on the market. Go to LifterLMS.com and save 20% at checkout with coupon code PODCAST20. That's PODCAST20. Enjoy the rest of your show. We're coming back, folks. I just want to point out that if you've got a client and you're looking to build a membership white membership website or a learning management system, why don't you look at WP Tonic to host the website on? You get all the benefits of a suite of plugins that would cost you a lot of money, plus fantastic hosting. And another factor, you get consistent advice and support from WP Tonic. If you have a technical issue and you're looking for some advice, you can approach WP Tonic. So go over to WP Tonic and sign up for one of our hosts packages so straight back into it so uh, let's start with this this is going to be an interesting one um what what did you think of matt manweg's state of the word 2022 um i don't think this year it was a COVID event was it i think they uh they managed to avoid that one uh, um but what did you think of it in general adam 
Yeah, I thought, well, let me say, this might just be my perception. Uh, I'm, you know, very much paying attention to these things, but it seems like um, WordPress is moving along a lot faster and smoother development-wise core is than it had in prior years as well. And you also see it in WooCommerce. There's like more aggressiveness towards building cool things that actually make sense. You know, the full site editing things, you know, started what last year. And I thought to myself at the beginning of this year, no one's going to use this thing. And now I find myself a year later wanting to use this thing, you know? Um, and so I just see it continuing going in that direction. Uh, one of the things that uh, I was uh, really keen on in the state of the word is all the discussion regarding artificial intelligence, which is something I've been very much using uh, since uh, 2020. And um, and I actually have been building a tool using artificial intelligence, but it was really nice to hear um, uh, it from the state of the word, the discussion of artificial intelligence as it relates to what we're doing, you know, building websites, businesses online and stuff like that. That was uh, quite interesting to me. Uh, but personally, I'm quite uh, optimistic about the future of WordPress, where it's going, the new things. Let's face it, at a certain point in life, you don't like new things, right? Like, um, you know, when I was in my 20s, something new. I love everything new. Let's throw it out. You know, my wife used to complain. I would always change everything up at the house. Like there'd be a different phone, a different cell phone, a different TV. And like I, 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 would, I would change everything up all the time. But, you know, like it, when you get in your 30s, you're like, eh, I don't like it so much. I'm starting to feel a little uncomfortable by this thing. And I'm sure that just gets worse and worse as you get a little older. Uh, but uh, I'm excited for the the changes and the improvements that are happening to uh, uh, WordPress and WooCommerce. I think there's like, it feels like there's new blood making decisions or there's, there's actually some direction where it hasn't felt that way in the past. Yeah. What, what's, what was your reaction about the statement about changing how um, premier plugins are dealt with in in the directory, in I thought that was quite interesting because I thought that you, I thought that was never going to be touched. You were never going to see any movement in that particular area. But they, that it seems to me that almost everything's up and being looked at now. Um, did you get that impression? Do you mean the new taxonomy where, like, if you're looking at a theme, it's as if it's commercial or community yeah. supported in the same, I guess, it's not implemented yet for plugins. I actually wanted to make a suggestion, though, that there should be a new taxonomy that the users place on these things of excessive banner ads. Um, I had installed the plugin the other day, and, like, five days later, all of a sudden, I had five banner ads in my... My and this plugin was on hundreds of thousands of websites, and I'm like, how can you do something like this? Um, so uh, I'm all for like you know um, uh, more transparency uh, with these things, um, and it could go either way. I think it's probably maybe uh, in some regards it's very good uh, if you you make a choice based upon there being real support available, there being a paid option that might provide better support. You know, I, I think I, I, I once told this story. I, I was an early user of pods. Pods is oh, the Yeah, I know you did, you did a few videos on your yeah. YouTube. You were quite supportive of it really, weren't you? I, and this was like in 2016, 2017. And I realized, huh, I've got some problems now. <laughs> With pods, who can I go to? Guess what? It's nobody, you know, because they, 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 and and the, and then the plugin hasn't matured or changed or improved or anything. Not their fault. It's community supported, you know. So, um, you know, I probably would have gone advanced custom fields in hindsight because I know I could have paid for a, a professional version, gotten professional support, and, and it would continue to improve and get better uh, over time. Uh, but when you go with some of these uh, com uh, non-commercial plugins, it, that just doesn't happen, and it's no one's fault. It costs money. Every support ticket costs money. Every developer hour costs money. So 
I think it's interesting in that way, at that regard. I think there's a certain user that wants to use everything that's free and they might cripple the potential of what they're doing. Um, uh, uh, but there's also the person that wants to know that there's always someone to go to and it's not going to be abandoned. How many plugins have you used that are either overtly abandoned like they're saying it's now abandoned or you could tell it's abandoned because it hasn't had an update in three years and you thought this was the coolest thing when you installed it that's happened to me far too many times so in that regard i might just prefer a commercial version of something even if it's free because i know they're going to keep the free one going because they've got the pro version uh over to you Kurt. Well, I can't help but be distracted about how you talked about the YouTube stuff. And it's almost like a follow-up question. Sure. Um, you, I mean, that's how I know you. I know you from the YouTube. And then when I deal with customer support, it's people say, I saw a YouTube video with Adam and Adam says, right. And then I, and then I got to word it so that, you know, I, I, I got to float around Adam's words to, to, uh, to oh. get what I'm doing the support ticket. Right. Um, how, and I can't ask you for your secrets, but, how can you yes, inspire? You can. How can you inspire or attribute that type of success? What was it? Just stick to itiveness and sticking with it and watching the numbers grow, or because a lot of people make great content and don't have any followers on YouTube? It's 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 a really weird environment. Yeah, you know what it is. Um, I well, I don't want to just dis discount myself and i don't want to discount the factor of luck right because in luck and timing not luck but luck and timing like so, so it's the three thing all three things have to be there right mm -hmm. if you don't have like the right personality for it that makes people feel connected to you so okay. for me i'm i'm actually the same person i was before i uploaded my first video i'm just I like people. I like talking. I care about people genuinely. Um, I'm in in real life. I'm a nice, like a like a really nice, generous guy. I give more to people than they'll ever give to me. That's just who I have always been, and that's who I still am today. I think that comes across in the videos, you know. Um, uh, and I would be, and I would tell you that I'm also intentionally when I'm making a video, I. I want to be a likable person you know there's a certain there's a, there's something to that you know that you you, well, you that, also have it's so obviously that's where i've f failed isn't it adam <laughs> <laughs> no no certainly not you know but it's being real too right like you're very real jonathan yeah very real he'll be back he'll be back he's stuck in me. but he froze on the mr evil pose oh right <laughs> It, like that's part of it right like you you could joke with the people that watch your videos i didn't come up with this miss dr evil thing it was like everyone started calling me dr evil well it's actually when you so when you came regularly on my uh round table show we named you miss dr evil so, yeah. and and i i embrace it <laughs> i embrace my flaws no, that's not a flaw that's just like a genetic thing right uh i'm sure kurt can um uh relate have you, um, still, got, have you still got the white cat that i sent you I do. Absolutely. I do. Oh, that's true. That's right. Oh, that's so true. It was it was Jonathan who mailed me a gift and it was the Dr. Evil's white cat. Oh, that's so great. Bringing up the old times, the memories. I think that's uh, fantastic. Yeah, I, hope you um, I hope you still strike it, but there we go. <laughs> uh, uh, um, let me uh, let me finish up on the question. I'll try to do it concisely. I, I think um, number one, I think uh, one of the things I see a lot of uh, YouTube the mistakes they make that maybe some wanting to make a, a YouTube video they're not personable enough, uh, and they are not in um, uh, building genuine relationships with the community. That is what becomes the mustard seed uh, of your channel that ends up growing. Uh, when they, when you do right by them, you communicate with them because you just genuinely care about them. I really think that is it. Uh, I, and, and a lot of people that are just not interested in doing that. Uh, and there's bad stuff that come with that too, right? You know, you put yourself out there, you, you do get, uh, some, uh, well, people attacking you and hating you, well, but that's there, part of it. Well, there's, you know, there's some genuine criticism, but also true. There, there's some people, you're on their radar because they're just jealous, aren't they? 
you know, it's fundamentally... That's part of it. They're just jealous, aren't they? Um, they don't allow... You know, there's two things. Either you get a bit bitter about other people's success or you you utilise their success to generate you to do things. There's two ways to go, isn't there? Either you get bitter about it or you look at them and say, well, they did that. That motivates me to up my game. There's two ways of doing it, isn't it? Well, and this actually ties into one of the questions you might ask me in about five minutes about, um, you know, uh, books or websites or online resources. You, I, I was thinking, you know, what has inspired me as an entrepreneur and it's other entrepreneurs, you know, and where can you get access to other entrepreneurs? YouTube. You know, where can you follow other entrepreneurs' online journeys? YouTube. Um, or whether they have a blog or something like that. So I've always been so, and that's actually how I got my start on YouTube. Um, I was watching YouTube videos and I, I tell this story. Um, there's, he's one of the most well known YouTubers today, tech YouTubers. His name is Marquez Brownlee in his YouTube channels, MKBHD. Um, and he started making YouTube videos when he was like 15. And they're still up. And he was just a little kid, you know, and I thought, and now the guy's huge, right? You know, he sits down with um, uh, like presidents. He sits down with uh, influential athletes, um, uh, CEOs, like he's been at Elon Musk's Tesla uh, built with Bill Gates, like all these people, Kobe Bryant when he was alive. Um, anyways, I looked at this guy and I'm like, man, I saw this guy as a kid. And look at him now. If he can do it, I'm, I can do it. And that's how I got my start, you know. And so, yeah, that's that's one of the things that's always surprised me. Like, I look at people that have come up and I'm like, how can I? I'm happy for them. And how can I do it, too? <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it, you know, it, it's, it usually boils back down to hard work, likableness and a little bit of luck, it, luck and timing, luck and timing. Yeah, you know, you do need a bit of luck, but, you, you know, in some ways you make your luck, but you always got to be aware that um, you do need a bit of that special luck, you know. Don't ever kid yourself that it's all about what you can do, but you're going to be rudely awakened quite quickly, aren't you, um, yep. in my opinion. <laughs> Especially so, it's a difference when you enter a market at the right time or you enter the market at the wrong time. Not the stock market, but like say you're having a product and you're entering that mark. Like the right time to have a product up and running was pre-pandemic. <laughs> you know, if you had your product up pre-pandemic, it shut up like a rocket ship. Um, but then if you 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 saw products going on that rocket ship and then it's the end of it, like, you know, maybe earlier this year and you're like, I'm going to come out with the same product. It worked for that other company, and it's it's now crickets. Uh, the opportunity came and went. Yeah. Anyways. Um, on to the last question before we wrap up the podcast part of the show. Hopefully, Adam, you'll be okay to stay on for some a couple other questions for our bonus content. But um, I always like this question. If you could go – if you had your own – TARDIS, Doctor Who, I don't know if you ever watch any BBC TV. Um, you had your own time machine and you could go back like seven, ten years ago and you could mentor yourself for an afternoon. What would be the key message you would like to get over to the version of yourself that you think you know now that you would like to tell your younger self? Wow, that is quite a question and i'm afraid it's going to require a deep answer yeah. um so not like a surface level answer uh like a heartfelt answer and it's probably a good way of wrapping up the year with like a heartful heartfeltness right it's that time of year i have always been um business minded you know business schools business degrees very business minded at a very young age and i think that most people, including myself, don't think big enough. Sure. And and they don't because they might not believe that they can do the big thing. And I think if I was to go back 20 years ago, 17 years ago, let's uh, be more generous to myself, 17 years ago, maybe 20, I would say, Adam, do not be afraid to think big. You can accomplish 
that thing. You just have to figure it out, but you have to think big. Even, even today, I would say to myself, I think too small, even though like, like Surecard is Shopify level, right? Of complexity, capability, and all of that. I'm thinking big, but I, I'm trying to think even bigger. You know what I mean? I even know that like I could think bigger than that, you know? Um, I think that's what I would tell myself uh, to, to to remind myself that you can accomplish these things, but you, you just think too small, you know? Why think I want to make a million dollars when you could say, I want to make a billion dollars? Seriously. Anyways. No, no. Millionaires are quite common nowadays. Yes. And that like and once you have a billion a million, you're like, oh, I should have been shooting for a billion. Like a million's actually easy to get. Um uh it's actually very easy to get. Um uh, but uh a billion's a, a, a more of a challenge. So uh, a- anyways, not I, I don't really care about money. Uh I've got plenty of it. I, I don't really care about it that much. Uh but it's not a driver for me, in other words, is what I'm trying to say. Um, uh, but but uh, I would just say think big. And I would encourage anyone to think big. I tell my son that. you got to have big dreams. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you, Adam. Um, Adam's going to stay on for some bonus content. You can watch the whole interview, plus the bonus content on our YouTube channel. Um, so, Adam, um, how can people find out more about you and what you're up to, Adam? Well, the most exciting things that I'm doing right now is SureCart at SureCart.com. It's actually a full brand um, of Sure-related products. We have Sure members. It's like a, a membership-style plugin for your website. We have Sure Writer coming out, which is an AI writing platform that's coming out. We have Sure Triggers that you can sign up now uh, to use. It's a full automation platform rivaling Zapier, but it's also deeply integrated into WordPress. But, of course, home base is youtube.com slash WP crafter. Um, leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you and I'd be happy to uh, help in any way I can on your journey. And, um, my new co-host Kirk, Kirk has agreed to be my co-host in 2022, which is great news. So Kirk, how can people find out more about you and what you're up to Kirk? Uh, I latched on to the name Manana Nomas back in 2008 in New Mexico. And if you look Manana Nomas up on Google, it's impossible to not see me there. So that's the easiest, best way to find me is just look up Manana Nomas. I am also a somewhat of a LinkedIn addict. I'm on LinkedIn every day. So if you go to uh, LinkedIn forward slash Kurt Von Annen, um, friend me, connect with me. Uh, it says to follow, but I always welcome connections and I generally send an invite to get on a conversation real quick because uh, I like to be relational on there. So that's the best way to reach me. That's great. Um, I just want to wish you, the listeners and viewers, a really happy Christmas and New Year. 2022 has been a great year for me. It's had some great ups and also some very painful downs. It, to say it's been a, a ride uh, would be an understatement. It's been one of the most challenging, but also one of the uh, most interesting years I had. Um, I'm looking forward to 2003. I, I, I hope you have a great one as well. We will be back in the new year. We'll see you soon, folks. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening. We really do appreciate it. Why not visit the Mastermind Facebook group? And also to keep up with the latest news, click wp-tonic.com forward slash newsletter. We'll see you next time.